Coming to another important concept in arterial waveform, whether it is constricted waveform or dilated waveform. How can you find out? This is the normal arterial waveform and here you can see the blood flow into the arterial system. In marked vasodilatation, here you can see the lumen is dilated too much. Here the dichrotic notch is shifted downwards. That means your vessel is markedly dilated. And here you can see the vessel is constricted, but what happens is your dichrotic notch is stiffed, shifted upwards. This shows there is increased vascular stiffness and this is peripherally constricted waveform. Another way to put it, you can say low SVR is vasodilated and high SVR is vasoconstricted. Here there is low SVR, your dichrotic notch is pushed down and there is steep downstroke. Two most important variables, I will say three most important variables. One is preload, your volume management can aggravate the heart failure, another one is your systemic vascular resistance, your afterload and the third one is going to be contractility. All this can play a major role in the perioperative period precipitating heart failure. So, your volume management has to be accurate, your afterload reduction should be good and the contractility should not be deteriorated further. And if these three things is not managed properly, your fluid is going to going to the alveoli and the patient will have acute pulmonary edema. Another important terminology in heart failure is whether the patient is compensated or decompensated. Usually when a stress is placed on the heart, for example in hypertension, a chronic stress on the heart, the heart undergoes left ventricular hypertrophy and compensates the necessary cardiac output. This came with three important strategies for myocardial protection. First, you have to produce an electromechanical arrest. Second, you have to induce hypothermia as a component of myocardial protection. Third, you have to have lot of protective factors to counteract the deleterious effect of solution which is used for causing arrest as well as hypothermia. This will be beneficial during arrest, but post arrest, you have to counter the deleterious effect caused by arrest and hypothermia. So, at the first part, the cardiac arrest, rapid diastolic cardiac arrest to conserve energy by sodium and calcium depletion, extracellular potassium and magnesium elevation, and finally, by infusion of local anesthetic or calcium antagonist. Second, you induce hypothermia. When you put the patient on cardiopulmonary bypass, there is blood contact with an artificial surface. There is going to be surgical trauma. You are going to do cardiac surgery and once you rewarm and come off, there is going to be reperfusion. So, ischemia reperfusion injury can happen and you have to anticoagulate the patient to go on a artificial surface. So, there will be blood loss and coagulation activity will be altered. All this can lead to complement system activation, cell activation and endothelial activation which leads to a cytokine production, cytokine storm and systemic inflammatory response syndrome. So, how you are going to protect the organ from this deleterious effect. The main organ affected by this various etiology are the first and foremost you have to protect the brain. Coming to postoperative cognitive dysfunction, the time frame unlike delirium remains undefined but it is usually detectable from 7 days after surgery. Here it have multifactorial etiology. It can be emergence from anesthesia, patient sleep deprivation, severe pain, anxiety, use of multiple drug, 
inadequate nutrition and post operative or inter operative complication and in pocd whenever you talk about pocd you have to divide in non cardiac and cardiac patient why you have to do that in cardiac you have cardiopulmonary bypass which can independently contribute to pocd so whenever you talk about pocd you have to divide into cardiac and non cardiac 